Hello, it's Markham Matos here for Markham 3D, and today we're going to be bashing the default cube. So first we need our bashing stick, so let's go Shift A, add in a mesh, and then add in our cylinder. I'm going to press Tab to go in Edit Mode. Let's scale that on the Z axis. Now what I want is the pivot point to obviously be at the origin, so I'm just going to go GZ. There we go. And then I want to scale on the X and Y axis, so I'm going to press S to scale, Shift Z, so it cancels out any Z scale, and then we'll bring it in like so. Now, what if I do if I rotate X 90 degrees, let's go minus, let's bring it here and it's going to start all the way back here. And what we'll do is we'll start the animation at frame 10. I'm going to press I to insert a keyframe and we're going to make that the rotation. At about frame 40, it's going to swing around and boom, it's going to hit it. Let's maybe find a bit of a better spot just to grab the corner. So I'm going to go in that deep. And then I press I and set the rotation. Now, because I didn't set the location keyframe, it doesn't matter where I move it, it'll always stay in the same spot, except for the rotation. Now, let's jump over onto the default cube. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the default cube, press tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide, 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 subdivide. There we go, so now we've kind of got this. From here, I'm going to put out the point where the rod is hitting the default cube. And now over in shape keys, let's just go press tab to go into object mode and press the plus sign next to the shape keys. Now this is the basis. So this is the base mesh that everything kind of goes off. Let's create another one. Now, if we go into edit mode, and for instance, if I grab this and I go G and put it all the way out there, I press tab, it goes out. But if I come over into the values and scroll this up, there we go. So we created a shape key for when this is activated, that's where this mesh will be represented. So let's go Control Z, Control Z a few times. There we go. From here, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make that crevice. So I, I'm going to press O to turn on proportional editing, or we can do it up here. And then I can press G and we can see the whole area that is being affected. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to go in, okay? So it's only that much affected. Let's go into numpad seven and wireframe, and let's just kind of start moving this in. Oops, kind of do something like that. All right. And so we're gonna be kind of blocking out this whole area that gets smacked. So let's go backwards and forwards a little bit. I'm gonna maybe select this vertice here. I'm just kind of guesstimating that I'm picking one, G. There we go, missing one, that one there. So let me just quickly do this and then I'll come back. So there we've done it, we've kind of created this nice little crevice. I mean, we could put in more work and make it fit the whole area, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. From here, what I'm gonna do is go back into tab mode. I'm just gonna increase the value to one just so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna press right click and shade smooth so it's nice and smooth. However, the corners are a bit butchered at the moment. So while we're over here in the object data, let's go down to normals and auto smooth. And there we go. So anything that's greater than 30 degrees, we'll have this nice hard edge where everything less than 30 will kind of be soft. What I might do is I'm just going to increase this maybe to about 60, just so this whole area is nice and soft. Okay. Now, if we kind of come back into it, we can kind of see that the pole comes in and then it kind of just slowly stops. Let's select that pole. And while the keyframes down the bottom here are selected, I'm gonna press T and change the dynamic effect to bounce. What this will do is as it's coming in, it's gonna come in super fast and then it's actually gonna bounce back and then get wedged in there, beautiful. So let's now work out at what point we need to change the shape key of the box, or the default cube. So where's the first impact point there? So let's go, that's our impact point. So let's select our default cube, come into the shape keys. The value is already one, so I'm gonna right click, insert keyframe. Let's go back one, and I'm gonna make it zero. Right click, insert keyframe. And so now if we kind of scroll through it, boop. There we go. Pretty simple way of bashing the default cube.